All right, guys, Jason Andrews back. Welcome to the channel. It's a beautiful day here in Bremerton, Washington. By beautiful, I mean that it's not raining. Okay, so we got the Raptor, but this video is actually about the Shelby, okay? I, it's been about seven months since I've owned the car, and it's time that I do a review video on it. Uh, now, unlike most of the other review videos you see, uh, you know, I'm not just driving the car for an hour or two and saying, oh my God, the exhaust sounds great and uh, it's the perfect machine or whatever. You know, I've lived with the car uh, for seven months. I've done a ton of activities with it and I've experienced some things that few GT350 owners have. So uh, today we got to move the Raptor, then we'll get the Shelby out. First things first, cold start on the Raptor. Yeah, all right, let's go. All right, so something that you guys might not know, I see this a lot come up on the forums, is that people wish they could start the car uh, with the exhaust valves open. I don't have a full workaround for that. However, if you press the engine start stop button, let the car turn on, and not just automatically start the car. So you got all your gauges now and stuff. You just go to uh, track apps, exhaust mode, sport. And now when you start the car, it's gonna turn over initially with the valves closed, but almost instantly open up. So here's a cold start on the Shelby GT350. <laughs> So you can see how they kind of instantly opened up. So we're going to let this thing warm up, uh, yeah, a few minutes, and then uh, we'll take it out. Okay, guys, so this is my 2017 GT350 in grabber blue with black stripes and a black painted roof. Uh, now, I bought the car at basically the beginning of the year in March. And for those that are kind of new to the channel, I actually sold a supercharged Dodge Viper and uh, an E60 M5 to get this. So both of those were uh, V10s, uh, both awesome cars, uh, but I wanted something a little bit more balanced. And uh, once I test drove this thing, I knew that like this was the car for me right now. Um, now. Full transparency, like if you're somebody that's thinking about buying one of these cars, um, I lost my motor at about 1,600 miles. Um, that was that was due to no fault to me. Um, always warmed up the car, had plenty of oil. I wasn't beating on the car. Uh, I had a proper uh, break-in period, um, basically a thousand miles. Changed the oil. A few hundred miles later, the motor just went. Um, it was a couple rear uh, main bearings, and a Ford replaced it uh, under warranty with the new, uh, you know, uh, 2019R motor that's uh, supposedly uh, shares some parts with the GT500, so it can handle up to 12 pounds of boost, which is good. Um, so if you are thinking about getting this car and you're looking at a used 2016 or 17 and you're like yeah that's a pretty good deal well it's almost out of warranty and uh, I, I hate to say it but chances are you you'll probably experience uh, maybe going through a motor especially one of the first gen voodoo motors uh, now that being said I have about uh, maybe 4500 someone's coming Okay, so I've got about 4,500 miles on the car, and uh, so I lost it at 1,600, uh, you know, so basically almost 3,000 miles, and the car has been perfect, right? It's been through a couple different track days, uh, it's been on some long drives, uh, some, some spirited, aggressive driving, and I don't have any complaints at all. In fact, the car is like the most fun I've ever had driving a car. I know everyone raves about uh, the Tremec six-speed in this car and while it is very good um, I'm not sure if it's just my car um, but the synchros at times can feel a little bit um, uh, a little bit notchy uh, almost grindy uh, 
Now this is only under like light driving. Um, obviously when you're like pushing the car, the car performs perfectly, but under just like calm driving, like maybe trying to save some gas or something like that, like the, the car doesn't, doesn't operate like perfectly smooth. So that could just be my car. I was thinking about taking it into in the dealer. Uh, for you guys that have GT350s, uh, maybe put in the comments and, and let me know if uh, you guys experience anything like that. Uh, some things maybe I would have done different. The only thing I can think of, and no, it's not uh, get an R, was I wish I would have got the 8-inch uh, touchscreen uh, Sync Sync 3 unit on there. I just have the 4-inch screen, and while it has a nice backup camera and, and whatever, everything still works, it's not kind of as fun or as flashy as the big 8-inch screen. I know that Hellhorse Performance uh, makes the upgrade kit. It's like $1,400. So I'm kind of going back and forth with it. If I was still daily driving this car, uh, I would definitely get it. Uh, but because I have the Raptor now, uh, there's really not a lot of like reason to get it. You know, the Bluetooth and stuff still syncs fine and whatever. Everything works. It's just like a little bit... It'd be nice to have that big screen in there, but that's the only thing. The seats in this thing are some of the most comfortable I have ever been in, um, especially for like aggressive bolstering. I'm not a big, big guy. Uh, you know, I'm probably around 200 pounds, 5'11", um, you know, and, and I fit like really well in those seats. If you were somebody that was like 230, 240 and up, you might have issues uh, sitting in these seats, which is why I think I see a lot of the bigger guys that have, uh, you know, the comfort seats or whatever. And they're nice, they're heated and cooled, and, and I'm sure they're very comfortable. But for like track driving, I couldn't imagine having like those other seats in the car. So if you're someone who is gonna be driving aggressively, uh, I would definitely get the Recaros. The brakes on this thing are incredible. Um, you know, my Gen 2 Viper had really bad brakes. Uh, which is part of the reason why I sold it. And the M5 had, had good brakes, but nothing like this. As far as like the balance, uh, feeling how the car, where the car is leaning uh, under braking and stuff, it's it's great. And I'm nowhere near the driver to really fully articulate how that works. Um, all I know is it feels great and, it, and it's like incredibly like confidence inspiring, pushing the car hard at the limits. And that's the best thing about this car. I could be driving at like 80 or 90% and I can still feel really good. When I was in when I was in the Viper, I was scared to like even push it 50, 60 percent. Um, obviously, the Viper had much more torque and power and stuff than this thing. But as far as like all around, uh, I can really like enjoy driving this thing at the limits, which is just huge for me, especially being a manual. Okay, I'm not just jumping in some DCT, letting the computer do all the work. I'm like in the car, controlling it, driving it, having a good time and I still feel like really great driving it. It is an S550 Mustang, and that is probably the only thing I don't like about it. Um, there are a ton of S550 Mustang GTs and stuff around, and while they're really nice and they're cool, uh, I wish this thing was just a little bit more uh, different than those cars. I have a lot of my friends, you know, we have another Grabber Blue, just normal GT, driving around town, and they text me, they're like, hey, I saw you driving, saw you driving. Like, no, I wasn't driving, but this thing looks so similar to the S550 Mustang. Uh, I wish it had just a little bit more flair on it, you know, something. Uh, the GT500 is kind of going to have that with the big spoiler, more aggressive front end, blah, 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 whatever. But uh, I wish they, they did just a little bit more with the car. It looks fine. This is not the best looking car uh, of any auto automobile manufacturer i get that whatever it looks fine it looks sporty it definitely turns some heads but it's not it's not like a showstopper it's just you know for normal people it's just another mustang you know they don't nobody cares about this car the color's nice whatever and, and i get some attention for that but it's just another mustang so things i've done to the car i've had it fully ceramic coated uh, also the wheels and i've also had 3m uh, paint protection film done on a lot of the car okay i've got the rear quarter panel right here that's done i've got uh half fenders across the hood across the hood and i also have the front done now what's weird about the s550 is that it's got a lot of grooves in it and see you can see here the film 
is like kind of coming up and I've already had this redone uh, once before and see look here here's even another here's even another Nick you probably can't see it on camera but um, there is a lot of curves in it so if you are gonna get this thing expelled uh, or 3m paint protected uh, just make sure you're going to like a really good uh, dealer here uh, you know the shop that's been doing mine uh, they're nice and they do military discount and they're local so I like give it a shot but had I had unlimited money or unlimited uh, like options I would go with uh, the highest uh, quality place you can only because this is a very fr this is a very difficult place to uh, put the paint protection film on uh, other than that I did the windows uh, I have a video about that I did a uh, 20% on the sides and 5% on the the little baby window here 20% uh, on the back too uh, I feel like if you have an s550 Mustang or Shelby GT350 or whatever uh, it's kind of like a must especially with the black roof yeah even just looking at the car um, I really wouldn't spec it any other way uh, everything is perfect I see a lot of guys switching wheels, you know, getting a different front splitter, getting a different rear spoiler. But honestly, this thing, it looks fine. It looks great. Um, yeah, it looks fine. I've been thinking about doing the uh, Corsa X-Pipe resonator delete on the car. Um, but to be honest, anything that I do that's not a Fat House Twin Turbo 800R kit is basically a waste of money for me. Um, so that just takes me into kind of future plans. The only thing I will do to this car is ship it or drive it to Fat House and do an 800 Twin Turbo, uh, build on it. Uh, I've been so impressed with those guys it's just really expensive for me you know i'm i'm in the military you know i'm not making you know hundreds of thousands of dollars a year so even just to afford this car and the raptor i'm incredibly thankful for uh and so to save up another 25 or thirty thousand dollars, you know to get this thing at 800 horsepower while it's going to happen I, I just don't know when um so if you like and subscribe this channel um i'll be able to afford it I'm just kidding um, but yeah so that'll come eventually and I hope I'm still doing YouTube while uh, when that happens and if Fat House ever watches my video and they want to sponsor this video uh, we can totally work that out okay on the side uh, yeah okay so enough talking let's just drive this thing things that you might notice um, I hate to keep saying this but I have been driving manuals my whole life okay uh, you're talking 20 years how old am I yeah geez almost 20 years of driving manual transmissions in this car still the clutch still takes some getting used to like every time I get in the car I almost have to like relearn its engagement points um, I know they make a, a spring, you know, for it, a Stita spring or take the spring out or whatever.
55 in a 50. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, uh, the clutch spring. Um, yeah, it just it doesn't feel 100% natural. It feels fine. Uh, it just takes some getting used to. And because of the different uh, like engagement points that you're not used to, sometimes, like when I'm shifting, there's like, how can I explain it? Gas pedal, uh, you know, clutch. There's like such a delay that you might have a tendency to over rev because when you go to shift and you put the clutch in and you, you pull the gas out and when you reverse that, the clutch might still be engaged like a little bit and I've had times where it like over revs just a touch because of that engagement point. I'm not saying people are losing motors over that, but if you're taking the car to 8250 and thinking that like the clutch is just gonna engage however you want it to, um, that's not exactly the case and you might you might actually push it like deep into the red because of something like that so whatever all I'm saying is just be extra careful when you're driving um, and you're getting used to that clutch lost my first motor uh, too soon to really tell uh, but the gen 2 voodoo for me has been working absolutely perfect so uh, again I'd be scared of the gen 1's I wouldn't be as scared of the gen 2's although I have heard one or two people's motor going but it's not nearly as common uh, on the gen 2's and you have to remember these things are hand built and I know Ford has done some uh, how do you say quality control and I think now they're only having one person completely assemble the engine so if you look at the gen 1 motors uh, on the signature plate there'll be two signatures but now they're just moving to one person so I think that that gives that one person a little bit more focus okay I know this has been done I know this has been torqued down blah 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 whatever so so now it's only one person uh, building these motors up here in Bremerton we're about to go into winter which was kind of the driving force of why I bought the Ford Raptor so uh, stay tuned for some videos on that for sure and uh, if you guys have any questions about this car or anything I've dealt with um, just ask them below I'm pretty good I feel like it getting back my channel's not big so whatever if you asked a question I'm sure I'll get back to it so uh, thanks again for watching. If you don't mind, like and subscribe because that is going to get us to the uh, Fat House 800R Turbo Twin Turbo Package sooner. I'm at the uh, local uh, racetrack and uh, the Porsche guys have uh, reserved the track to do autocross. I wonder if they just let me jump in. Probably not. Okay, thanks so much for watching. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode. And I lost a GoPro. Chances we find it? What do you guys think? Uh-oh. Okay. I didn't drive too far. Did not drive too far. It's black. side of the road which is nice so probably it uh, bounced outwards uh, I bet it's gonna be okay yeah 
I probably bounced and fell off the side of the road. I might have to walk the road. It's probably about a mile or two stretch that it could have fallen off. I had just moved it actually. There is a good amount of traffic on this road. But like I said, it was on the outside of the car uh, towards the shoulder on a red Joby suction mount. if someone like picked it up in just a five minutes to where I had turned around. It's got to be like right here somewhere. I don't see it. Ah, I see it. Ah, it never even made it. you got to be kidding me. Never even made it. Look at this. Ugh. Never even made it. Garbage. Still recording. Okay, thanks. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, we got the GoPro, ah, thankfully. So, uh, yeah, okay, cool. I'll check you guys in the next episode. Peace.